humanist perspective presented by the New Orleans Secular Humanist Association following a few principles of humanism. We're committed to the use of science and reason for understanding the universe and for solving human problems. We're skeptical of untested claims of knowledge, but we're open to new ideas. We are concerned with securing justice and fairness in society and in ending intolerance and discrimination. We are committed to the total separation of religion and government. We affirm humanism as a realistic alternative to the theologies of despair and the ideologies of violence. We reject the concept of an afterlife and believe in living a full and rewarding life here and now. We value and respect each individual's right to judge and lead their lives according to their own position as long as it's respectful of other people living in a free society. We hope you enjoy today's program and others in the weeks to follow. Hello, welcome to The Humanist Perspective, brought to you by the New Orleans Secular Humanist Association. My name is Beth Deitch and I'm your host for today. I'm membership coordinator for NOSHA and I serve on the board. You can go to NOSHA.org to learn more about the organization and about secular humanism. Um, Today's show is going to be about summer camp, and I got the idea for this show because next week I am going to be a volunteer counselor at a place called Camp Quest that is designed to be an alternative to religious summer camps. It's kind of like atheist camp, but it's not really with a specific focus on atheism so much as on science and critical thinking and has an absence of any religious content. Um, and so that got me thinking about what religious summer camps might be like. I mean, I've seen Jesus Camp, which I think is a little over the top. <laughs> I only went to Girl Scout Camp. So um, I reached out to some people to see if they would tell us about their camp experiences. And so we have Glenn Pearl here, who went to Zionist Youth Camp, Sabrina Jacks, who did Vacation Bible School Day Camp, and Jonathan Heitmeyer, who went to, it would be uh, even, what? It was Methodist. Methodist. Was Methodist, Methodist camp in uh, Illinois. Yes. Yeah, so welcome, guys. <laughs> um, so who would like to start? What makes religious camp religious? Like, is it religious from day to, you know, like, shall we start with, let's start with Zionist youth camp. <laughs> what, how did Zionism <laughs> permeate the camp? <laughs> experience? Um, well, uh, the camp was uh, the national high school level camp for the organization Young Judea. Mm -hmm. uh, Young Judea is a Zionist organization, um, probably a little over a hundred years old. So mm -hmm. these organizations predated the State of Israel and in fact Zionism uh, originally was just the idea of a Jewish homeland, a Jewish state. Mm -hmm. Once that happened in 1948, the, the emphasis then became anyone who wants to go and live in that Jewish state should be allowed to do so, uh, as well as any other support from any other country, United States uh, in particular, for Israel's goals, uh, you know, their existence, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So in terms of how did Zionism you know, work into the camp, uh, it, it, or it any religiosity. <laughs> well, uh, that's the thing. You know, Zionism is is more of a, a socio-political right. movement than a religious movement. Right. Um, that's not to say there wasn't you know a hefty dose of Judaism yes. throughout it. We had prayers. We wake up in the morning. We go to prayers. Then we go to eat. We say prayers before we eat. We say prayers after we eat. Okay. <laughs> Pray, pray, pray. <laughs> but again, the emphasis was more on the community, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, uh, aspects of Judaism in, you know, culture and community. Mm -hmm. uh, the games that we played very often were, you know, n not your normal baseball, soccer, like football. Like what? Uh, weird games. <laughs> they're like, you know, like dodgeball type of games, but, you know, they're... They, they were just different was all. I just learned about Mormons have some like one-on-one -on -one <laughs> killer dodgeball thing they like to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, is Israeli and Jewish song and dance, you know, we, mm -hmm. had, we had like dance counselors, you know, that would teach us all of that. <laughs> so again, the emphasis was much more on, you know, the discussions around, um, 
being a Jew mm -hmm. in the United States, promoting Israel, uh, and if you wanted to make Aliyah, which means to emigrate to right. Israel and spend all the rest of your days there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, an, an interesting mix. Yeah, yeah. So as a kid, it didn't did it not it didn't really feel oppressive to you. It just sort of felt like, you know, sort of more of a cultural thing than an indoctrination thing? Well, having been raised conservative uh, mm -hmm. uh, Judaism, um, you know, my family, we never prayed on a daily basis. We never prayed right. before or after meals. So there was definitely that difference for me. You know, it's a bit more heavier than what I, what I would, would, have, would have normally experienced. But again, it wasn't, it wasn't a, what I guess I would think of as a Jesus camp kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you know? said, that, was, that was over the top, Jesus <laughs> camp thing. Um, so it was ever present, but certainly not emphasized. Right, right. So then vacation Bible school, Sabrina. I've heard that about, a lot of people go to that. It's like the day camp thing, right? Usually a week or two in the summer, age ranges. I probably went starting three or four years old mm -hmm. up until at least eighth grade. Three or four years old, did you say? Yes. That's really young. Yes. <laughs> there was a the whole preschool element. Wow, they're getting you, <laughs> they're getting yes, you young. Yes. <laughs> yes. Get them young. Um, I I grew up Baptist, mm -hmm. so Southern Baptist at that. Um, and our church was a very small community church. Um, actually, it's a pretty somewhat decent mixed race church, which was interesting and, yeah. and made things a little bit, I think, better in many ways. Um, but it was definitely, we pray first thing, you pray before you eat. And there was a lot of, when you're young, it's just like, you're coloring pictures of Noah's Ark. <laughs> and that's, you know, kind of how religious it is. Right. Um, but as you got older, there was a lot more emphasis on people bring, you You had to bring friends, Ooh. right? So you had to you bring your, your non-Christian friends with you to vacation Bible school so that they could become Christians. And there was a big deal made of anyone who accepted Jesus Christ during the week. So there's always- Did you get points for that Basically, or it, 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 it was in many ways presented that way. Um, you know, how, you wanted how would to you be, entice them? Like, ooh, you want to come and pray all day? Well, what it was, <laughs> there wasn't much else to do. I, I lived in North Alabama. You're like, hey, do you want right. to get some free food and you know hang right. out somewhere for a day? And they're like, yeah, sure, that's, that's fine. Right, right. Something to do, right? So, so there, and that actually helped <laughs> pre-internet, <laughs> pre-computer right. um, boredom. Um, do, I did right. bring f several friends. Um, <laughs> Well, and obviously, it didn't so, eventually stick with you. Uh, no. did, did you like lead people in who are still in? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible that I have messed up some poor person. Yeah. Um, but luckily, it's but not anybody only, I still talk like to. If you're only five or six, I think you can <laughs> right. just forgive it. <laughs> right. Um, and it's really more. I would say when you're about ten to, to about thirteen, fourteen, because that's about when you mm -hmm. stop doing. If you do vacation Bible school at that age, you're a counselor, mm -hmm. and so you're helping with the younger kids and things like that. So it's sort at of that what age? at like 13, 14, that maybe. That seems very young too. I, um, I think count, counts, uh, uh, CIT is counselors in training. I know at Girl Scout camp they were more like 16, 17. At Camp Quest, they're I think minimum is 15. Yeah, they're they're sort of pushing you through there. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, wow. Well. All right, and so John, tell us about <laughs> your. Uh, so yours was sleepaway camp. It was. Yeah. And. I absolutely loved it. It was a really nice campground. It was kind of hilly, mm -hmm. trees everywhere. There was a little beach with a dock that we'd go swimming and everything. And I I never thought of it as being overtly churchy or anything mm -hmm. like that. But looking back, it really was. Like we'd have, you know, prayers before everything and after. But it was more of a social thing because a lot of some of the kids that went didn't even normally go to church. Mm -hmm. So as far as the bonding time, with the kids, it was just a very normal social thing. Mm -hmm. But we'd always have a um, a morning kind of get together where we'd pray and talk a little bit, then lunch. We had activities throughout the day. I hated when we played softball <laughs> in the sun. Uh, but uh, yeah. Other than that, no. It was just it was a lot of time just getting to to know the the kids your age mm -hmm. from from other areas mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And then we'd have an evening church service and sing and do all that and you know just prayers before every meal but for the most part northern protestants mm -hmm. <laughs> it's you're not expected to talk about religion with other people that mm -hmm. much you don't talk about money <laughs> you know so it did, yeah. 
the, the social aspect of it was very much like any other right. camp would right. be. Right, right. It really was. Right. Um, yeah, so I would go through, you know, my, my orientation stuff for uh, Camp Quest, and very so often I come on things and I'm like, I bet it's not this way at church camp. <laughs> um, um, certainly one of the things is that they have the very big focus on critical thinking, on asking questions and any and all questions um, about, you know, about even heavy subjects like death and sex and gender orientations and things like that and say that they're very open to everyone exploring all, all issues in an open, non-judgmental kind of way. Um, did you ever encounter things that like you asked questions about and were kind of like, no, you just go to heaven or whatever? <laughs> um, that there's not really that room to sort of move outside of the, that worldview? All of our counselors were ministers, so Ooh. I didn't feel very open to <laughs> talk Ooh. to them too openly. So it was, yes. it was like very formal with the older people. And yeah. then with the kids, I mean, it was, it was honestly, it was just like any other yeah. camp would have been. Yeah. So we'd all kind of sit through and get through what the adults had to say. <laughs> and then we'd hang out. And, and so you just kind of let it roll off. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they weren't in any way like guides to greater exploration or anything. Did you feel you were more just being babysat? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, what am I used to right now? I, I don't think there would ever be an opportunity, at least in vacation Bible school, where you could be asking those kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something that uh, fostered discussion that was not prescripted, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, something that was being taught or an activity that was being done had a purpose and it was very much, this is what we do and this is how it's done rather than Let's talk. Well, and this is the one way it's done. Right. This is the one way it's done, but mm -hmm. this is, you so know, emphasis how we're... on conformity. I would say so, yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that as with the young Judea yeah. as well. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Like, were there nonconformist kids? How did things go oh, for yes. them? Well, we had people sent home. People would sneak in alcohol and drugs <laughs> and <all> that. <laughs> so once that was found right. out, it didn't happen that often, but I right. remember it happening. Right. And the biggest scandal I think that ever happened was they had a dance one night, and um, Billy Idol's uh, Moni Moni came on, uh -huh. and they did the chant, uh, <laughs> and, and they stopped the, the dance right then uh -huh. and there. You know the chant that I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. yeah. So that, yeah. Was, that was one big scandal. And That's a great scandal. Yeah. <laughs> so fantastic. Yeah. But yeah. Did, was it co-ed? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 100%. And so, so were you allowed to interact freely with, with members Absolutely. of the opposite sex? Absolutely, yeah. When you said I mean, dance at first, I was kind of like, mm. <laughs> there's the Bible distance between you. This <laughs> <laughs> is my dance place there. <laughs> right, right, right. I've heard that. You have to keep the distance of a Bible between you. Holy Spirit. <laughs> room for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> right, right. Room for the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. So um, what do you think was sort of the weirdest thing that you would say that happened? Uh, and he's like... You know, did you, was there ever a time, because all of you are atheists now, <laughs> and so was there any time back then when you were doing that sort of thing that you were like, I don't know about this. This is kind of like, why are all the, wouldn't there be a bunch of dead people floating in the water around Noah's <laughs> Ark or whatever, you know? Yeah. Did it ever kind of uh, occur to you, or do you just feel like it was sort of so smoothly put in there you never thought to question it? <laughs> uh, I, went, I went to an altar call once people were putting so hands explain on Explain altar call. All right, it's when you, it's just saying that you're going to accept Jesus into your life or whatever. And I. But you have to go do it in front of everybody, yeah. right? Yeah. And a bunch of my friends were doing it. I'm like, eh, it's not going to hurt. Well, people came up and started crying and putting hands on me and stuff. And I felt really a little sleazy because I wasn't being right. honest about it. Right, right. <laughs> so that was probably the creepiest thing that ever yeah, I think that's probably me. common. Do you think you're supposed to do this thing even though you're not really that feeling it and you think every, you thought everybody else was feeling it, right? Yeah. I, I bet I, they I was weren't either. Like, I was like, yeah, I was like, <laughs> and just everyone was so excited and all this other stuff and I was just like, oh, mm -hmm. kind of came up here for the <laughs> wrong reasons. I'm not feeling this and it just, right. I don't know. Just right, right. That, that's my weirdest experience. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Sabrina? Um, I did... I started reading as uh, you know, I'm a voracious reader anyway, but my junior, senior year in high school, 
I read the Bible straight through. Mm-hmm. Because uh, that when, it? when <laughs> does anyone ever do this, right? And I, I picked up books, and I read about different religions, and I read about mm-hmm. and did, like, Greek mythology. And, I mean, it just sort of went mm-hmm. all out. Um, and I, I continued through church at that time. I had actually moved from the church I went to as a child to a church that people I went to high school with went to. So it was very much a social aspect there. Yeah. Um, and then I just sort of... In college, for the most part, I didn't do anything religious. Um, maybe went to Easter service or something. Um, and then after college, I sort of tried church again and didn't really stick. And then after that, it was like, why am I even trying? Like, I, I, w- I felt like I was forcing it. Right. right. Um, in many ways, uh, my, my parents weren't religious, but my grandfather was. And I went to church with my grandfather. And my grandfather, I. I I still don't think he could ever do anything wrong, right? Mm-hmm. So if my grandfather believed it, right, and he was a civil engineer, he was a thinker, right. So it was like, well, I must be missing something, right. and so I think that was some of it. Um, but it it didn't when I was a kid. I don't think I questioned it then, mm-hmm. you know. It was just like, oh, okay, that's what happened. Doesn't quite make sense, but you know, sure. I'll figure it out when I uh, grow up. Right. When I grow up, <laughs> right, it'll get right. clear to me. <laughs> And as I started questioning, I was like, man, this thing just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, more atheists have been made by reading the Bible than anything else. Yes. For sure. Very fair. For sure. For sure. What would you uh, think? Anything that's particularly unusual as compared to you know, your average secular? Uh, uh, in terms of the camp? Yeah. Well, um, you know, again, with the emphasis uh, there, more of as a you know, socio-political thing. Yeah. Um, you know, was the there a reli- political aspect the, of the Yeah, camp? well, the religious aspect, uh, you know, again, it was all there, and I, I never I never experienced anybody questioning anything mm-hmm. about it. Everyone just more or less accepted it. Mm-hmm. We were all just doing it. And I think, honestly, intertwining all the cultural aspects of the songs, et cetera, with all the prayers kind of really kind of makes it a lot more acceptable, I right. suppose. But in terms of the social political stuff, uh, I would say the weirdest thing that happened was towards the end of my second year, there was some of the, some of the campers kind of started using the term brainwashed uh, mm. in terms of you know just the the, the whole. Push. How old are you then? Uh, I was in high school, mm-hmm. sixteen, mm-hmm. I guess, seventeen or so. Yeah. Um, you know, and I the program I was in was called Mahon or leadership, and, mm-hmm. and the idea was that you know we would leave the camp and go to our, our our temples, and we would start a little young Judea, you know, for 10, 15 year olds or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, run our own little groups and continue the whole process. Uh, and so me and two of my other uh, bunk mates, we kind of started to be a little bit rebellious, and uh, we got glares, and you know, it it, it kind of it didn't get really really that there was, bad, yeah. but there definitely was some you know you felt we, that we, pressure we, to conform. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. very very strong pressure to do that, and we, we we were spoken to on more than one one occasion for our you know behaviors and activities mm-hmm. and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than that, you know, it was it was a regular camp. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, one of the as I said, I was going through you know sort of my camp quest things and uh, and and their their goals and their uh, you know that they want to foster curiosity and scientific inquiry and uh, and critical thinking and uh, encourage exploration of the natural world and do you feel like you got that kind of <laughs> you laugh at that <laughs> no not <laughs> Not I was going to say, why wasn't it there when I was a kid? Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, I man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I have everything I read, I'm just, I love it more and more. Um, just reading my orientation materials, um, I mean, they, they, they take care to use trans inclusive language when they, uh, this is camp, campers will be uh, separated by gender identity. They you know, request what people's pronouns are when they sign up. Um, they had, they're, uh, you know, with the Camp Quest culture is open to all questions that campers may discuss and ask questions about relationships, death, sex, or other complex social interactions. And if you become com- uncomfortable or shy away from the discussion, they'll get the idea that there's something icky, wrong, or mysterious about those topics. So show no fear. If you are comfortable with the topic, you're welcome to address it. And if you're not, tell the camper you think it's a great question and let them know you'll find someone to help give them a better answer. Um, yeah, of that, and uh, it definitely has the be inclusive and non-judgmental, be aware of, and try to avoid heterosexism. Let me explain what heterosexism is. It does give me this little look. I, know. I mean, so, so, I mean, did you know that you were gay back then? I had a 
inkling. An inkling, yeah. yeah. And was that but something that you felt really like you? An option, so yeah, that that's what I was going to get. That it was buried, just not remotely. Very buried. In, <laughs> yeah, that 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 was not allowed. <laughs> well, yeah, and something I certainly wouldn't have talked to the counselors or anything about. Because they're all ministers. But some of them were very cool. We had mm -hmm. you had. Methodists are relatively like like we're not anti science or mm -hmm. anything like that yeah. and pretty mainstream. So I think if I were older and I would have had an opportunity, mm -hmm. there might have been one or two that I could have maybe talked to a little mm -hmm. bit about it, but it certainly wouldn't have been encouraged through the program itself. Right, right. And right. I wouldn't have felt free to talk about that. Right, because you feel like you're kind of just supposed to be like everybody else. Hundred percent. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so so uh, anybody else have any of like, could you feel like you didn't, did you talk to your counselors about things that, or did you feel like there were people you could talk to about things that were important no, to you? Really. No, <laughs> they just seemed like sort of babysitters. Right. Yes. Authority, and for you obviously authority figures to rebel against. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because you're a preacher's kid. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So if you had kids, and then you have kids, if you had kids, would you send? You wouldn't send them to a religious camp. Oh, no, no way. No. <laughs> John's like maybe. <laughs> I, re I loved Little Grassy though. I really did. And it wasn't. If, if if they wanted to go, I wouldn't prevent them from going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you were choosing but, a camp, oh no, I probably. Because I was actually surprised that I have a friend who is who is a lesbian and a non-believer and told me her kid was at. Episcopal camp, <laughs> like church camp. And she's like, Cause, well, it was the only camp. She didn't know there was Camp Quest. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, look at Camp Quest next time. Um, I, but I she was like, she just couldn't find any alternative. Sure. And uh, that was the only camp we could go to, and so that was yeah. just that was just the normal camp. I never thought of it as being overly religious. Yeah. But I mean, looking back, obviously, that was the main point. But. Yeah. I don't know. I just I, I had fun. I really enjoyed. Of course, it. I suppose that is the main point: is to, for you to have for you to just think you're just having fun. Right. <laughs> just having fun. We're just singing songs and doing That's our crafts. What want you and, to think. Right. Right. And it, it just insidiously, yeah. You because know, then you know you if you try and tell people that as adults, they think you're batshit insane. But if you get get all of the weirdness in as a child, it's just totally normal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so did any of you, none of you started to question that while you were doing the camps, at summer camp, no, didn't think to college. question it until much later? Yeah. No, I, I questioned everything, but I kind of thought of the Bible as just any other, like the, the, the Greek tales mm -hmm. and stuff like that. They were just ways of explaining history and stuff like that. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I wasn't taught to believe that every word in the Bible is from God and all that. Right. So I, I knew there was symbolism and everything, so it wasn't a huge... Yeah. Did you not feel that there was a belief in the supernatural at all? or? I certainly never had a belief in the supernatural. Right. But I, mean, I think I was raised possibly like you in a very sort of mainstream Protestant, uh, like nice Presbyterians. Mm -hmm. We weren't told to take very the Bible smart. entirely literally. Correct. It was more like stories about God, not necessarily written from God. Yeah. And yet I was... My moment of surprise was when I found out that a lot of people did take very ser seriously all this supernatural stuff. You know, like really did think Jonah spent days in a fish and, and in the Noah's Ark and all. And I found that out later. Yeah. I didn't realize a lot of people were taking this literally. Yes. And that's, that's when I got a little frightened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How old were you when that happened? It was in Fairfield, so that would have been sixth grade on. Yeah. I guess that was just, because really you, everyone went to a different church mm -hmm. and they all had different beliefs. And we all knew that, we weren't right. sure exactly what right. growing well, up, yeah. but everybody had a whole different set of beliefs, even though they were all Christian. Right, yeah, well yeah, because you're, you're in the South, where were you? New York. New York, so you were up North, that's gonna be a-, a Lots of options there. Yeah, <laughs> and John and I are both from the Midwest, so that idea, and also I think it was also a time as well as a culture that you just didn't talk about those things. You sure. know, people, most of my friends as a kid actually, for whatever reason, were Jewish kids, and they, they went to <laughs> temple, and I went to church, and some people went to different, but yeah. you didn't really talk about it much during the week. Correct. And it was at some point when, I think I was in junior high or something, I heard about some fruit Ha ha over evolution, and I was like, "Wait a minute, people are taking this seriously." <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, like you said, kind of was like, "Whoa, this is." <laughs> well, and I, 
I learned about some of the major differences. Like I had some mm-hmm. friends that were Pentecostal. They couldn't go swimming with with mm-hmm. boys. The girls couldn't mm-hmm. swim with boys. <laughs> there are all these. Di- I didn't know about these. I knew there were differences with the churches, obviously, but right. I didn't realize how severe the differences could be until I got in probably high school. Right, right. But now, see, you were you were Southern Baptist, so you right. you knew everybody knew who was. What? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, because I guess you're out there recruiting. Right, <laughs> you're right. You're out there going, come to Bible right. school. And I, I would say, where I, even though I I had a neighbor who was Hindu, and I had some did other Did you try to religion. recruit Hindu? No. No. <laughs> Um, who did you try to recruit? <laughs> it, it would just be other people, like friends from the neighborhood, but or people who were already when I was Baptist in middle school, or, or no? not necessarily. They just necessarily didn't go to church. Their family uh-huh. might not have normally mm-hmm. gone to church, but it was you would have never. Like I said, my parents, my parents rarely, if ever, stepped mm-hmm. foot in church, um, and yet they would have never stopped me. They would have considered it mm-hmm. normal to be going to church, it, it was all still part of right. the culture. Everyone went to church. Yeah. And yes, there were a few other religions, pretty much no Catholics, no Jewish people. Um, you know, I don't even think we had a synagogue, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, we, we did have a Mormon, tam- uh, a Mormon tabernacle, but uh, you know, we were really Catholic, maybe, yeah. maybe one church yeah. in a pretty decent sized city. It was all Baptist. Um, or other similar religions. Wow. Um, And so there was, even in my high school, we did the things like, we had the prayer for the seniors. Uh, In public school? In public school. Right. We had all of the Christian clubs and the go to the flag thing. We had all of that, and and it it was a big deal where hundreds of students would be there. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was very much, even when I was in a public school, it was still a very Christian environment. Right, and just the sort of everybody does this. Everybody does it. Yeah, were there any kids who didn't? Not really. And they, everybody kind of went along. Everybody went along. Yeah, because you know you hear that when you hear about these uh, schools that are breaking the law in that way, and they're like, well, everyone does it, no one complains. It's like, well, I don't know that you can be sure that that's uh, uh, because everyone agrees, they <laughs> just be peer pressure. <laughs> yeah, so well, we're getting to the end here, and so I want to thank you guys for coming and talking to us. And I want to thank all the viewers for joining us on The Humanist Perspective. And next month, I will be talking to Jim Dugan about my experiences at Camp Quest uh, after I get back, um, which I assume will be a somewhat different experience, um, hopefully a more exploratory one. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it.